Hello everyone, Jules here. Today I would like to talk about a fascinating book written by a well-known esoteric author, which is The Secret Doctrine, Volume 3, by Helena Blavatsky. Here is the book. It's quite a thick book. It's about 600 pages. And this is volume three. A lot of people are probably not aware of volume three. Um, most people, if they have read The Secret Doctrine, would be familiar with volumes one and two. And for me, this book is a bit like Blavatsky Revisited because I began my esoteric path over 25 years ago um, while I discovered and began to read The Secret Doctrine Volumes 1 and 2. So I was very much thrown into the deep end right from the beginning. And that was a bit daunting way back then, but in a lot of ways it did prepare me and it did introduce me to uh, not only esoteric books and esoteric writing but a particularly dense kind of esoteric writing. So to have volume three now is really quite interesting uh, for me and it's really good for me to revisit this. I think for people who have not read volume one and two or who have not read any of Blavatsky's writings, um, there was a book written before that called Isis Unveiled and that may be an easier book to start with. I see this volume three as a bit of a kind of, maybe a kind of glossary of writings. It's, to me, it's like that, but to a lot of other people, it probably wouldn't be like that, especially if you have not read uh, volume one or volume two of The Secret Doctrine. This was published originally in 1897 because Blavatsky died in 1891 and this was published by the president of the Theosophical Society who took over after um, after Blavatsky died that was Annie Besant and Annie Besant also edited this this as well volume three this is published by Cambridge I'm not sure if it's available in other publications, but this is the Cambridge edition and it's very well done. As a matter of fact, Cambridge publishers um, also have a lot of other, quite a few other publications. They're doing a kind of an esoteric series. I know they have definitely published um, some of the works of Eliphas Levi, for example. And uh, I think this is really quite well done. I wanted to tell people about this today. I will talk about what's in the book as well. Uh, the subtitle of this book is The Synthesis of Science, Religion and Philosophy. So to talk about what's in this book, there's about 600 pages. There is no index in this book and that is because the contents are laid out in such a way that um, for each chapter it is noted basically what's in each chapter uh, in the beginning, the front of the book and the contents. So you just look at the contents for the chapter that you want and then it's got the um, related page number there like that. So that's, that's good. So to talk about what's in this book, there's also um, diagrams. There's some charts as well. 
mainly diagrams, which is good. So to give you an idea of what's in this book, um, there's a very good introduction. I think the introduction is definitely worth reading first to get a general idea of the approach of the author. I was also going to say too with this book, uh, it was published a few years after the death of Blavatsky because uh, this was a collection of writings that Blavatsky actually intended to be a third volume for the Secret Doctrine and um, Annie Besant as editor um, decided to um, you know, organise these many writings um, and edit the writings. By editing I mean sorting the writings really. Um, none of this has been rewritten, it's just been sort of sorted into some kind of order. And it's been ordered quite well. Okay, to talk about the contents of the book, there's the introduction, which is really worth reading. There's 50 chapters, and they're called sections in the book. So it's sort of like section 1 to 50, and or I think there's a last chapter, 51. So each of these, I'll just mention the chapters or the sections of note that I particularly like. Section 2, for example, is Modern Criticism and the Ancients. Now, I think that's a really good one to put near the beginning of the book because even now there is criticism from an intellectual point of view by academics towards ancient thought. Um, most colleges and universities really begin from the ancient Greeks and they don't really look at other um, the writings or the ideas or philosophies of um, civilizations that predate that. And I, I, I agree with that. I, I think that's a really important point to make. Section three, or I'll call these chapters. Chapter three is the origin of magic. Chapter four is the secrecy of initiates. Chapter five is some reasons for secrecy. Chapter seven is the book of Enoch. Now, when I'm talking about the, the um, headings for these chapters, there's also paragraphs that are also, they also have headings as well. And these are all of Blavatsky's commentaries and views and thoughts on all of these different topics and also her, her knowledge. So chapter 8 is the book of Enoch. Chapter 9 is Hermetic and Kabbalistic Doctrines. Now the other thing I like about this as well is in volume 1 and 2 of The Secret Doctrine there's basically no mention of Kabbalah and I was sort of puzzled by that all those years ago I had a very sketchy idea of Kabbalah back then but I was a little bit puzzled that why I was, that was important that why was that not mentioned in volume 1 and 2 but volume 1 and 2 are quite different they are really Blavatsky's own esoteric worldview, whereas these are her commentaries on all of the different esoteric topics of the world. So that's why it was basically left out of volume one and two. So chapter nine, Hermetic and Kabbalistic Doctrines. Chapter 10, various occult systems of interpretations of alphabets and numerals. Chapter 13, Post-Christian Adepts and Their Doctrines. 
then you go, it has lots of things in between, but I'm not mentioning all these lots of other really interesting things, but these are the things that interest me. Chapter 21 is Hebrew allegories. And Hebrew allegories not, are not only related to the Old Testament of the Bible, but they're related, of course, to Kabbalah. Chapter 22, the Zohar on creation and the Elohim. Chapter 23, what the occultists and Kabbalists have to say. So in other words, the thoughts of those. Chapter 24, modern Kabbalists in science. That is also an interesting, of course, a very interesting chapter. Chapter 26, the idols and the teraphim. Chapter 27, Egyptian magic. Chapter 28, the origin of the mysteries. Chapter 29, The Trial of the Sun Initiate. So you're probably getting an idea now of the whole range of subjects that are in this book. It's a, it's a truly fascinating book. Chapter 30, The Mystery of the Sun of Initiation, and by sun as in the, the sun, S-U-N, Chapter 32, Traces of the Mysteries. Chapter 33, The Last of the Mysteries in Europe. Chapter 24, The Post-Christian Successes to the Mysteries. Chapter 35, Symbolism of the Sun and Stars. Chapter 37, The Souls of the Stars, Universal Heliolatry. Chapter 39, Cycles and Avatars, Avatars. Chapter 40, Sacred Cycles. Chapter 41, The Doctrine of the Avatars. And she's also calling them avatars here too. So you also need to remember that this was written in late Victorian period. So this is also, um, you know, the language of the time as well. So that was number 40. 40 secret cycles. So the doctrines of the av avatars or avatars. Uh, 41, chapter 41, chapter 42, the seven principles. The seven principles were really important in theosophy. And of course, I probably haven't mentioned so far, this so far, but of course, uh, Madame Blavatsky was one of the founders of the Theosophical Society. So that is chapter 42, the seven principles. Then you get all the way down to chapter 50, which is a few more misconceptions corrected. That, of course, has got all kinds of interesting subjects in there, in that chapter. So then it goes on to papers. After that chapter, chapter 50, it goes on to papers on the bearing of occult philosophy on life. That's an important thing to, to talk about. Then there are appendixes, appendices, and notes, notes on those, um, notes on the three main sections. And then there are notes on oral teachings. So there's just some of the things in this book. Um, as I was saying, it is an absolutely fascinating book. It is, it is kind of densely written. Um, it's not something that you'd read quickly by any means. It is, it is like a type of reference book, really. It's like a type of reference book. 
Um, it's really for people who have read probably some of Blavatsky before. I, um, it's probably not the thing to go straight into if you are not familiar with Blavatsky. I was mentioning probably a book like um, Isis Unveiled, one of her first books, would probably be the best place to start if anyone is interested in reading some of the Blavatsky writings. This book otherwise, for people who are quite familiar with the Sacred Doctrine, um, it's a great book to have, but just keep in mind that this is quite, it's different to uh, Volume 1 and 2. It's more like, as I was saying, it's really like an extension of Isis Unveiled to me. I mean, that, that's how it feels, if, if you want to sort of look at it in that way. If you're familiar with Isis Unveiled, or you start to read Isis Unveiled, um, this is more of an extension of that book. I mean, I refer to it as a kind of a glossary of um, Blavatsky's thoughts and teachings, but um, it's because it's not really... Um, it's, it, it, it does tie in with Volume 1 and 2 to a certain extent, um, but not, it doesn't tie in completely. This is more of, as I was saying, this is more of the type of writing that's in Isis Unveiled. So for those reasons, um, you know, I mean, th this is really a, a great book for me because I had not no intention of going back to Blavatsky otherwise um, having read the earlier books and I hadn't really thought much about Blavatsky for quite a while for different reasons. I'm actually not a fan of volume one and two of The Secret Doctrine. I prefer Isis Unveiled and because I like Isis Unveiled that's probably why I quite like this book. I'm not a real fan of uh, Volume 1 and 2 because I, I think a lot of the theories um, are kind of problematic now, you know, in, in, in postmodern light, um, they, they're kind of problematic. Um, but I really like this Volume 3 and I wanted to tell people about this today because I don't think very many people know about Volume 3 of The Secret Doctrine. So this is published by Cambridge. As I was saying, I'm not aware that it's available. It may be available by other publishers, I'm not sure, but this is um, a great edition of this book. And it, it's relatively uh, easy to get. So I'll put some details below the video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.